We're here to answer your game gaming at Game Night Questions. With the Easter long weekend coming up and the fact that going completely unscripted last week may have been a bit much, yeah. we thought we'd take it easy for tonight and host a live AMA. So now is your chance, lobbyists, those of you in the chat room, if you got a question for us, gaming related or not, now is the time to ask. In order to give the folk in the lobby some time to think of questions and get them in, we're going to start off with a rather interesting question from Craig Cartmel. Craig asks, tell me about the best Welsh game designers. I'm waiting by the phone. All right, now I realize this question was sent in as a total joke uh, from Craig, who is a Welsh gamer. And I have a feeling he wasn't expecting me to actually get back to him. But I did manage to find two Welsh designers worth checking out. Note, there are, may be many more especially indie designers. But as far as I can tell, using resources like Board Game Geek and Googling, these are the only two I can find on there. So if you do know any Welsh designers that I don't mention tonight, tell them to set up a BGG page because then other people can find them because you know what? People like Craig are out there looking for you. So the first Welsh designer I found was Adam Porter. Now, Adam Porter has his own website and has four games to his name, which include Picoco, Compromat, Doodle Rush, and Throne. Now, I am sorry to say I have not played any of these games, but I did list them now in the order of BGG rank if anyone wants to check them out. Now, interestingly, of the four, Compromat actually has the highest rating. It's in the sevens, even though it doesn't have the best rank. So I have to assume it's based on number of votes, why it's not higher up in the ranking. Because I still, to this day, though I've been on the site since 2002, don't quite understand how Board Game Geek actually ranks things, compares to rate things, and what the geek rating is compared to the average rating and all that. Now, the second is Dave Neal, N-E-A-L-E. -E. Now, Dave Neal is actually best, most well known for his work on Sherlock Holmes consulting detective, The Baker Street Irregulars. Note, this is only one of the various Sherlock Holmes consulting detective games, and he is listed as the sole designer on this one. Now, he's also listed as a co-designer on a number of other games, many being mystery and puzzle games. He's done a lot of work on the Unlock games and has been involved with the new Echo series of games from Ravensburger. These are the new ones we were talking about. I might have been on a Sunday brunch, or I can't remember if it was last episode, where we were talking about audio escape room games. And that's the new Echo series. So Dave Neal's involved with those. Uh, he also worked on Five Minute Chase, Dubious, and The Animals of Baker Street. Obviously a bit of a um, Sherlock Holmes fan. All right, well, there we go. There's two Welsh designers all set. Uh, all right, so do we have anything from the chat room yet? Nothing. If just... not, we do have some stuff that was mailed in. Yeah, no, nothing just yet, but we did have some from the AMA questions on our Discord. So, uh, first up, uh, Mo, recently you have read The One Ring and Warhammer Fantasy Beginner Boxes. If, okay. you, if you had a, a group ready to go and no obligations, which one would be the first one on the table? All right, first off, I haven't finished Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay yet. I, I, am, I am still reading through that one, so that, that's going to color things a little bit um though i'm far enough in um but i don't know all the rules yet because as i described this game before so these are two very different ways to present a role-playing game uh rule set so it's kind of interesting so hey uh tales from the, the one ring said <laughs> uh, one ring the one ring is very traditional there's a book full of rules there's a bunch of pre-gen characters there's an adventure book and then they threw in an awesome thick source book for the area the adventure takes in then there's a couple player handouts and stuff and some dice, right? So that's that's your pretty, to me, standard RPG box set. Whereas Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay only has a bunch of character handouts, character sheets they tell you not to peek in, some dice you can't read, which that's a whole other issue, and a bunch of handouts and cards that kind of have the rules on summary sheets that looks like, you know, a bunch of sheets from Esoteric Order of Gamers. It's kind of odd, but no rule book. There's just an adventure book. And then those rules are presented as you're reading the adventure. And I don't know if all those rules are on the reference sheets, but I've got to say it's been awkward trying to learn the game. 
And as I read it, as you get further in adventure, of course, more stuff's been introduced. So like just the other day, I read the rules for critical hits and I'm like, oh, wow, these are quite different from the original game. And I, I think what I almost need to do is stop and read those sheets separate. So because of that, the question is not quite fair because I haven't finished Warhammer. So without it being finished, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, I don't want to run that yet. But let's say in a magic world, I've now completed reading both. And I hate saying it, but it depends. If the situations was how it is right now, and I can game with the people I can game with, I'm going to totally say the one ring. I'm probably going to run it with Tori, Cat, and Deanna. And because the one ring box set is family friendly, which the Warhammer is not, not to be surprised, not, not surprising, but it is not. I want to play with my kids. I think my kids loved the Hobbit. I don't know if either kid ever made it through Lord of the Rings, but they at least love the Hobbit. They know what, they know what, um, uh, halflings, what the, what are they called? Like Hobbits. Thank you. <laughs> they, they know what, wow. I'm like forgetting all the <laughs> words tonight. They know what Hobbits are. They know what the Shire is sort of. So I kind of want to sit them down and watch the at least the opening sequence of the first movie. Maybe that'll get it better, especially because it's set in that area. Yep. Then she they can visual. I think totally the one ring. Now, if Sean was coming into town and my friend Eugene actually could come across the border, I would totally be running Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Fourth Edition and spending most of the night hearing from Eugene why it sucks compared to the old edition. I it would totally depend who. It, and then honestly. Almost what I'd rather read run is Sentinel Comics. Like this is if Sean was in town, but not Eugene, I would totally run the Sentinel Comics role playing game starter set, which we review. Did we review it? Not yet. I think no. I reviewed, we did an unboxing. I can't even remember if I reviewed that. No, I don't believe we reviewed. That. I don't think we did. Yeah. I think I was going to run it. I decided not to do a read review. But like, and, and with the new edition of Marvel out, I think I would love to run that just so I can kind of compare with all the talk of Marvel because totally different style of uh superheroes rpg going on there from your your mechanical crunch let's see who has the highest stat to open-ended story gaming where powers aren't even well no actually sentinel comics powers are very defined and there are numbers but it's it's in between it's not pbta mass make up your own stuff but it's also not here's your list of powers and how many squares away you can hit which which is a difference so between the two i i, I Depends who's available. I, I'm thinking the one <laughs> ring probably. Like if I had to pick one, it'd be the one ring. Um, I still want to run Shadowrun, sixth edition, and try it because I've never played Shadowrun. I've got that beginner box. We've got the Tales from the Loop beginner box, which I really want to run with Tori and Cat now because they played the board game and to kind of go, here's the fun way to play Tales from the Loop, <laughs> not to insult the board game too much. Um, you can read my review to see why I actually do like it. Um I, I think that'd be like, I've got the Tales from Loop set. That would be another one. If Sean came down, he is elite. Have you played the RPG? I have played yeah, you I played it. Tales, yeah. You played it with Ange. So, like, yeah, you no, played it with me. It Sorry, it that wasn't, wasn't Ange. Ange. Todd. Todd, Todd. Todd. Shoot. Todd and his son. Yes. Getting names. <laughs> I, I'm horrible. I can't. Yeah, remember. Todd. I remembered it was Todd. But yeah, I've got the Tales from Loop set. This is all because of the stupid pandemic, right? I got all these RPG starter sets because I love RPG starter sets and I haven't run any of them because I don't have my regular group. And I think I was even actually going to play Sentinels before Breakout got canceled. I think I'd actually yes, signed up it, for a Sentinels it, it, game yep. in 2020. In 2020 um, yeah, you were supposed to play under to Eric Paquette. Yes, absolutely. Which is who taught me Sentinel mm -hmm. Comics. And then Plague. Uh <laughs> yeah. but you know and actually this is a good topic so this is we uh we still don't have anyone in the in the chat room they're being quiet but you did mention the marvel rpg yeah and i think this is worth talking about at least a little bit now we don't know everything the book hasn't actually, actually we been know very yet. little the book yeah the book hasn't been released yet we know that they are charging 10 bucks for a playtest version of the game uh but it is a full art playtest version of the game uh yeah. i think most people call this an ash can um, which if it was coming from an indie publisher, I'd be all in for, you know, I, I mm. want to help out the little guy. Disney's not the little guy though. I'm not no. quite sure why they're charging people to test their game for them, but I, that's, you know what? They did it for star Wars, which is also a Disney. Yeah, and, and, and again, many people have said Pathfinder did this first, you know, this is not the first time mm -hmm. someone has done a path. That's fine. You can't really compare Paizo and Disney though. <laughs> no, Paizo is a small company. Disney is one of the largest companies in the world. Um, it, it's not a money thing. Now, I I suspect it's related to the art. 
uh if they anything, don't have all the license yet well no they need to pay artists right they, they've got a oh, lot of good pay. art and i think there is probably original art they're gonna use original see book. that's surprising because every marvel rpg i have ever seen just reuses comic book art it's possible but and, and i'm not saying which i realize again, does still have licensing yeah, yeah. i i suspect because this is you know they're they're moving medium so even if they did have an art uh, a comic book license they may have to pay right. to re, use it in a re, different yeah. in a different medium it's not another comic book um so i'm hoping that they're paying for art and that's why they're charging for it because that's kind of the only thing that would make me not angry about it uh now as far as the game goes it is suspected based on the stat blocks we've seen of spider-man to be on the crunchier side uh mm -hmm. not super crunchy i mean it's a 3d6 system uh or well, two, well 2d6 plus one system i guess is yeah they, they their own their own unique proprietary system so that no one else can steal it basically yeah uh, their own copyrightable or as a copyright i always forget which is which whatever their own system they can claim ownership on even though you can't claim ownership on mechanics but i'm sure disney will find a way yeah so i mean it's it's roll 2d6 and then your your second your, your third d6 is your your modifier dice basically as far as we can tell uh from what we know uh it's the 616 system so apparently if you roll two sixes a one. and a one that's the magic number to um to roll i, I we don't know any details in that but looking at the stat block for spider-man not only is there a long list of very specific powers mm -hmm. but the to hit score like so his fight stat uh is 3d6 plus 14 plus 7 and his range attack is 3d6 plus 14 plus 3 or plus 1 or something probably so, multiple attack system like your old dual wielding from ad and d second edition I, <laughs> or it's melee and range no because yeah. they're two separate Things. yeah no it's it's interesting spider-man so gets to thwip thwip you don't get just one uh there's they're getting multiple things i know if you look at his uh initiative stat so he's got an initiative roll but he also has bonus so it's it's initiative roll plus addition you know he gets he gets an advantage so i, I believe that's probably in the case of a tie he gets the advantage um yeah. it's not it's not specified what that advantage he gets is in the in the stat block but i Even assume just the list of stat blocks are like this plus 22 this plus 23 this plus yeah. 26 this plus 14 it's D, D style stat modifiers it is but what scares me even more is the fact that all of the powers have ranges and squares that scares me more than anything else i'm like like if we're gonna go to gridded combat with marvel that just gridded combat does not fit comic book panels that it just doesn't work like tactical combat in a superhero game shouldn't be a thing to me yeah like even as a grognard who did like to play the old dc superheroes and compare numbers and who could actually run faster mechanically i don't want grids like even marvel superheroes back in the day used an area system but at least the area system was abstract and like a big open park would be one area because you can get across it quickly like it was abstracted so i didn't mind that this looks like it's going to be grid and that scares me well, and another thing is on top of that, so you've got your climb speed of six spaces and jump speed of six spaces and swing speed of 13 spaces and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, initiative moderate with an edge. So it's, it's his uh, Spidey's initiative is plus seven with an edge. Um, and again, I suspect that just means in a case of a tie, he always goes first because of Spidey senses. I don't know. Who knows? Um, yeah, size is an issue. So you've got, so Spidey is size average. So that allows you, that gives you some of your scale. I've always, you know, one of my big things to always talk about, if you're doing a supers game, scale is important. And especially when you're getting into MCU type things where you've got Ego the Planet and yeah. Spider-Man or Daredevil, scale gets really important. Well, you also have Ant-Man. Yeah, no, there you go. <laughs> um, now, one of the things that really kind of scares me under powers, he has a utility power and that is Wisecracker. Ah. That is what Spider-Man does, but, but I don't know how that that's a power. It's... And 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 how do you how do you mechanically that, that's, that's one of his superpowers, didn't you realize? How, how do you mechanically enable that? I, I I struggle. I mean, to me, you find See, what I don't like is the fact that says utility makes me think it's gonna be there's gonna be combat powers and non-combat powers. Well, they're... which worries me even more because Spider-Man 
cracks a heck of a lot of wise while fighting. That's kind of his thing. That's well, just and it's stick. interesting because under powers, it's actually spider powers and utility are the two columns of powers under the powers column. Yeah, I don't. So I, I, I admit I did not delve. <laughs> I'm not, not as much a superhero fan as Sean, superhero RPG fan as Sean. And I, I did look at the character sheet, but yeah, I yeah. didn't deep dive it that much. It's been, it's, it's, it's an, it's a very interesting take. Um, I hate to say that I'm probably going to buy this because I've really been upset about the $10 cost. But at the same time, uh, I am really interested in figuring out what the heck it is they're doing here because a lot of things don't make sense. Uh, the number one thing for me is in this day and age, in 2022, when you are putting out, you're in the fourth phase of Marvel movies, you have three TV show, new brand new Marvel TV shows a year, give or take, depending on the year, you have massive Marvel positive audience in front of you. Why would you make a crunchy game that appears to be catering to RPG players and not make a game that is very, very straightforward and going to be really easy to step into for your MCU fan who isn't an RPG player? Yeah. And I may be wrong, but when I start seeing things like 3D6 plus 14 plus 7, that scares me if I look at it from a non-RPG player point of view it kind of scares me as an rpg player too but that's because i don't like a lot of crunch see i i think they're marketing to the literal D D audience who are used to having stats with modifiers and skills and things being in squares and numbers but i i have to agree something story based quick easy to learn i i don't know it seems like if, if they were honestly marketing- huh, honestly sentinel comics that starter set is much more approachable from what I've seen. Yep. And to me, I mean, if they really wanted to market to the D20 audience, make a D20 expansion. Why? I mean, why wouldn't you just make a D20 expansion? Why would you make a yeah, new system is- to cater to D&D players? I, I, I don't know. I mean... Because Marvel and Disney are not Hasbro and Watsy. I, I suppose, but I mean, it's not like any anyone can make a D20 system, so... Yeah, but the problem is, if they made a D20 system, then fans would make expansions for it. Yeah, fair. If there's an open license that goes with making a D20 game. Right. Which is why I said that's why they made a proprietary system, so that they don't have... Which is going to happen. It's flipping well, absolutely. Marvel. I mean, you don't like have... You're a... going to find fan content. You may not be able to buy it, yep. because that'll probably be against the law, but it's going to be out there. I mean, show me one role-playing game that doesn't have fan content, period. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, like, especially when you get into Marvel. Like, yeah. like Marvel comic book fans create fan content, whether they're role-players or not. It's just a thing. If, if Hulk isn't in the playtest, someone will start, yes. you know, within a week of the game coming out, start, you know, you will get the Hulk stat block being passed around. And just so. the list, the number of powers on that one character. Yeah. Like that's one that's more powers than I think exist in masks. On well, one there are character. no powers in masks. I mean, technically, there well, are. there's sort of right. Yeah. Like you, you have your your moves, and you have moves that are obviously powers. Yeah. But I don't think you have as many moves as Spider Man has utility powers. Yeah, well, I mean, because Sp- uh, Spider Man has two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven spider powers and one utility power. So that's 11 powers. That's, yeah. that's enough to write a full role-playing game. Yep. Because apparently, you know, apparently web grabbing, web slinging, and web trapping, and web casting are all separate skills. Okay. Why? How web slinging and web casting are different, I, I feel. I mean, uh, casting would probably be to, like, web up an area. Like, like I'm going to reinforce that crumbling building with my web casting. I guess. And then, but then you could but also, then, I mean, that trapping could do that too. That's why right? I said trapping and grabbing to me are kind of the same thing. I'm assuming one's like, I get you in a ball and the others, I bring you over here. Well, but, yeah. Grabbing is you're grabbing something out of the air. Trapping is the standard, the tropey Spider-Man. You leave the villain hanging, yeah, yeah, hanging from a note. street light with a note, I guess. But again, do you need that? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I don't want I don't want to yuck other people's yum that much, but I gotta say it's it's not what I was hoping for from a supers RPG. That's, and I gotta say, I I I wanna say Marvel Heroic did it better, but you know what? Reading that book, the game was almost unfathomable. <laughs> I didn't actually get it till I sat down and played. And once I did, it was brilliant. Yep. 
but like I was an experienced role player with like whatever 30 years of gaming experience and I'm reading this book going this isn't gonna work it did which was awesome but I had to play it to get that and, and that that's where that's... Sentinels wins because Sentinels uses some of that system and makes it simpler right and that's that's where I think because Sentinels is by some of the same design team I think did a great job and I'm like what well, you want to you want some laughs is just follow Cam Banks on this thing because Cam wrote Marvel Heroic so boy monster on Twitter um you get to see some of their takes now and then as someone who designed the last marvel <laughs> rpg and it's interesting to see but like they completely tossed everything that went before this too yep which there is a history of marvel games that have some tropes that have carried over just for long-term fans marvel tsr was my first role-playing game it was my first experience didn't know what a role-playing game was this is in the 70s well by then it was 80s early 80s it's not like, like I think Dungeon Dragons cartoons were on TV, but it's not like there was you knew what a role playing game was or you just stumbled in on it or watched it on TV or streamed it, obviously. And like that was my start. And I always love that system because of it. And I liked that all the previous systems tended to have some kind of homage or, or yes. things they carried over. And, and that's the stuff, too, that seems to be completely missing from this character sheet is, is there going to be a morality system? Is there going to be a karma system? There is. Karma. Is there going to be hmm? there, karma's there? Okay, there, there is karma. So that might do it. And I also wonder about like one of the things that was fantastic about the last one was it wasn't just about fighting. So there were three different, I, I don't know, hit point stats, we'll call them just to, to keep it simple, where like I loved it because Spider-Man could beat the Hulk by math, making him laugh so hard he turned back into Bruce Banner. Right. And that's where Spider-Man would use those witty quips and stuff, which weren't powers, but there were things listed on his character sheet to use in combination with this other stuff to get the Hulk to laugh by attacking his, I don't remember what the mental stat was. There was, there was like one for stress and one for like your, your emotional well-being. And you could attack someone's emotional well-being. And if you stressed out the Hulk, he turns back to Banner. And like, you could play that out mechanically. I want to see how this game does it. That's now my benchmark of if Aunt May can beat the Hulk, because Aunt May could just talk him down. If Aunt May can beat the Hulk in your game, you've done a good job making a Marvel game. I would say a great superhero game, but a great Marvel game. So the, the what we, again, we're limited still. All we really have right now is the Spider-Man stat block. Mm -hmm. uh, there are There is health and focus, which appear to be the two side-by-side uh, -side, um, adjustments. So you can stuff. lose your focus? So you can lose focus or health. Okay. Um, because again, Spidey is has an eighty health and a ninety focus. Those are whatever, big numbers. Whatever too. that means. <laughs> um, now, I, in case people haven't been paying attention, one thing: this is the Marvel six one six system, and not only is the six one six the dice, but Marvel is the powers or your stats. So your stats are might, agility, resilience, vigilance, ego and logic because they had to spell out marvel somehow you know what that's fine that's, that's easier to remember than phase rip <laughs> um, most people who played back in the day do remember phase rip but uh, and, and it is it is a it is a score modifier system yeah so, it's it's a, it's a you know, roll the dice and add your thing yeah so it's it's you know you, spidey's might is five with a modifier of plus 12 um but like plus 12 added to 3d6 that seems like a really odd curve yeah no, absolutely. And I mean, you look at the fight damage and it's 3d6 plus 14 plus 7 for range damage. I, 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 I And I how no he idea. does more range damage than fight damage, I'm not clear, because Spider-Man hits really hard. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't tell you. The reason his amazing Spider-Man isn't his agility, it's his strength. There we go. That was a quote from the old Marvel. No, absolutely um but that's that's our take on on what we don't know yet about marvel yeah it was, but the marvel conjecture statement yes, the marvel conjecture section. statement um, and the marvel conjecture at some point segment. probably on a sunday we'll have more to say about it i don't know if we're going to do a a full section i don't know if you buy it well yeah. we should totally do a full review maybe, I, maybe I, that'll I, happen maybe i'll maybe i, I'll I just can't say anything me. i bought the star wars edge of the empire play test that came with stickers to put on your dice to make the custom dice there you go. and and i read through that and and enjoyed reading it but what i took it as as a this is going to tell me if i want to spend 80 bucks on the full book or 40 like it, it wasn't a cheap hardcover it was like 60 or 80 bucks right and i'm like i'm going to spend 10 now and get some enjoyment out of going through this because it's star wars i'll like the background i'll look at the pretty art i never use the stickers and that will make me decide, should I invest? So it was kind of like a, an investment, a potential investment, or a, I don't know what you call it, a risk assessment. So, so a, a yeah. 
measured risk assessment. And yes, I bought Edge of the Empire. I bought um, whatever the other two are that I totally forget. The other two hardcover books, Force and Destiny. What was the middle one? That was the that was the one that finally added Jedi. Anyway, I paid for that, so I can't say anything about it. <laughs> and then I gave it away in an extra life auction, or I either auctioned it or gave it away, and someone was really happy to take it off my hands. So, right. All right. Um, What's it cost in Canada? Is it even on there? Twelve thirty-eight. Paperback. Twelve thirty-eight. Twelve dollars and thirty-eight cents, or thirteen ninety-nine Kindle. Yeah. I, 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 even it's thirteen ninety nine even on Amazon.com on Kindle because it knows I'm in Canada somehow. I don't know. It doesn't show nine ninety nine when I look. I saw Matt's tweet. Yeah. Uh, I do have to say that the system fits the designer. Yep. Like they did not get a modern indie game designer to work on this. They got a tried and true classic yep. RPG writer to work on it. Yep. No, absolutely. With lots of D and D backgrounds. So. No, I mean I, I I got nothing against Forbeck and, and I think, you know, I'm sure he has done a fantastic job. Uh, he also, I'm sure, had some very strict guidelines to work within. I mean, mm -hmm. this is Marvel. Marvel doesn't do things without strict guidelines. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's how they work. So uh, it is what it is. And uh, we'll see. And, and we will more than likely talk about it because I really think I am probably going to end up with it. But moving on, I'm just gonna have to make fun of you forever now. I know. Like, oh, yeah, you bought that stupid. I, play I test. bought a play test. Bought a play um, test. So people just play test your game normally. I, I am guessing at this point it's been play tested. There was probably already the alpha test, the beta test, the blind play test, okay. all of that stuff all happened. Absolutely. Uh, so we do have a uh, question from the chat uh, came in from tech. What is the next game you are excited that is coming out soon or one that has been out that you're really looking to pick up? Uh, you got anything? Uh, well, I mean, I've got some stuff uh, in Kickstarter now. Uh, I did back the, uh, the the DC deck builder. Yeah, uh, not at full level, but I I'm getting a good. So, so are there rule tweaks? I I didn't look into it. I know you're you're more of a fan of that game than I am. So it's I'm, it's, it's okay. Uh, Rival. It's it, there's a new Rivals set. So Rivals is just there. The, the, two the good for yeah two player good versus bad. Yeah. Um, in this case, it's Flash. Uh, and then they are bringing out a set based on the video game um which uh, uh starts with an i um to uh, uh the no dc idea. the dc combat like fight fighting fight fight video game um there's there's a see i didn't even know there was a dc fighter uh i'm completely blanking injustice there with you injustice um so it's based off the injustice games uh and those okay. are the two main uh draws for the thing is, is rivals and injustice uh now with that the thing I'm actually kind of both excited and thanks, Darkling Blight. I got you a little faster than you, but that's all appreciated. Um, is the new multiverse box because the multiverse box that I bought, which I'm not horribly upset about buying because I got some cards out of it. It, it did come with more cards and more things to play, but it is just a hunk of cardboard with three equal sized troughs with the little paper folded over the edges so that your cards can can get hooked into the mm -hmm. paper and some foam and it's and, and again my, for those who don't know the dc deck builder has extra large cards for your yep. heroes so the those cards those. don't fit <laughs> and other cards get stuck in you know against the paper edges and that so they are putting out two new multiverse boxes a heroes and a villains um that are available in this set and they are like actual uh, vacuum form plastic properly nice. set with a with a slot that's big enough for hero cards they actually are making a useful multiverse box so i'm, I'm glad now could you get that. just that uh probably if you went into like like, you, like it's an add-on or whatever and, yeah you went in for the buck and, and got as an add-on um and i have to say that because they're doing well and i don't think anyone is surprised that they're doing well um the they are unlocking a ton of stretch goals just today they unlocked a new uh mini expansion so uh number nine i think in their expansion set which are all small uh tuck boxes that you basically add into one of the base games okay. um and in this case it is the marvel bombshells which is the 1950s inspired uh comic series that they that has run uh in the past with all the art from the marvel or, dc sorry, bombshells. dc not marvel <laughs> wrong 
switching back topics there. Yes. So the DC bombshells uh, art from some of their famous DC bombshells. If they were Marvel, it really books. would be a bomb. Drop. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh, so I'm interested to see, uh, you know, what's coming there. There's there's a bunch of stuff. And again, every every morning I'm getting a new email say, sort of saying, oh, hey, we hit a bunch of new stretch goals. Here's and I what, assume there was like an all in you get all the stretch goals backer level. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting all the stretch goals uh, for the stuff. Like, I don't mean the all in yeah, also yeah. get the, yeah, yeah. the superfluous stuff, but like a yeah. get the base new thing and all stretch goals. Yeah, and I can't actually remember um, at a certain point you start they started giving you uh, a new play mat. Uh, I may okay. be in at the playmat level. I'm not even sure if that was. <laughs> I, I wanted. I, I didn't care if I got it or not. So it was everything else I was looking yeah. at when I when I jumped in. So I may get a super villains playmat, uh, which is all right. I like the one. I like the playmat I've got right now, but it's a little um, shifted towards one specific base set. Style of play. Well, okay. uh, base set. So it's got some stuff on it that you hardly ever use in in mm -hmm. in your in in other games. Uh, but yeah, so I'm in on that. And uh well I have to say I am looking forward to it. So I guess that counts for this uh this there topic. Um Thunder Road. So you have two days left for go in and back it after back, whatever stupid pled manager, <laughs> whatever the hell people do with Kickstarter at the end, so you can get the Kickstarter, even though you didn't kickstart it. Right. I, I want that, but we don't have the money. So so like that's something that I'm excited for that's coming out soon. I am really looking forward to the reviews on that one um based on all my friends sharing pictures i am regretting not backing dark tower um so again i'm excited but it's not coming so i'm like excited in that what's well, cool it's out but i'm probably gonna have to wait till christmas till that one comes around um what'll be interesting to see with both of those is what they do for retail now the thunder road there are definitely exclusives and and they're basically warning people back now or you're never going to get these exclusives which of course there'll be ways to get them but you're not going to want to pay the price that they'll be out at yeah so those are two that i am definitely not getting that i'm excited about um so so we're sort of i'm uh, there's hype out there i don't know if excited about the right word frustrated i don't personally have or i don't know go back our patreon a whole bunch of you so i can buy these games <laughs> um i don't know um the expansion for lost ruins of arnak if I was shopping for games, that's probably one I would pick up. We are loving Lost Ruins of Arnak, enjoyed every play of Lost Ruins of Arnak, and every time I share a picture of the dang game now on Instagram, Twitter, someone's like, you played the expansion yet? You got to get the expansion. I'm like, dude, I got the game two years late. You know, I'll get the expansion next year maybe at this rate. But yes, I definitely, the Arnak expansion is something I am excited about that is out that I would like to pick up. Um, one that's coming soon is the new story expansion for Space Base, because despite our misgivings about the final state of the game, playing through Shy Pluto was awesome. Like the actual campaign was great. Really enjoyed playing through that campaign, though I still have mixed thoughts about the um, uh, the asteroid mining. I'm not sure on that. That's minor spoiler, but that's been out long enough. Sorry, tech. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so that's one um, looking to pick up. The, those are the big ones. Uh, the new Azul looks awesome. The new Azul looks really good with hex tiles, and it looks like the board's modifiable. Like you're putting tiles on hexes, and then they're on bigger hexes that go onto boards. So I'm kind of hyped about that. But like, I didn't even know that was a thing until noticing a listing on Amazon. Like, I literally had no clue there was a new Azul, um, even though we talk about the games that are released each week. So that's that's a nice big one there. Um, if you got anything else, jump in. Yeah, no, I mean, excitement wise, there isn't there isn't too much. It's it's right now. It's the DC. Uh, there's there's some super well, the stuff. new Marvel RPG, uh, the new Marvel. Um, although I'm I'm sort of I, I I'm excited to to sort of tear it up at this point. I I don't know. Again, <laughs> you're still excited to learn about. It. I, I'm excited to learn about it to see what they've done, good or bad. Uh, I'll admit, uh, the DC game, and then I've got some uh super stuff I've backed, but I that's not as much excitement as. I need it all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the uh, that's the addict in me. So we'll uh, we'll see what's coming up there. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I probably should say Frosthaven, but honestly, no. Which yeah. which will probably lead to another question we'll get to later if we don't get more from the chat. We got some stuff people mailed in um, a while ago, actually. So yeah, um, what do we got? We got uh, <laughs> he noted the time. So yeah, Thunder Rome Vendetta spe special maximum chrome is the new one that is that is ending pre-order is closing well it's not that soon on the 22nd of april okay so that's your last chance to get that one 
Um, of all the Kickstarter stuff we looked at, there's some interesting looking stuff, but like, I don't know. I, I, I have uh, games I haven't played of my own. Like I, I, there's enough in the pile of shame. There's enough, like there's stuff I got for Christmas. I still haven't played yet in my birthday. So overall I'm pretty good. Um, like I said, Thunder Road, the, the two restoration games ones are the ones I, I regret not getting in on. And, and RPG wise, nothing like there's, I, I, there's some big stuff that just launched. People are really excited about, but I don't care. I am curious about Marvel. Again, I've, I've been a fan for so long uh, that I really am curious to know what's going to happen with that. Oh, oh that's so... a good hot catch. Um, uh, tech in the chat has mentioned Quad Hero Second Edition. I uh, yeah, I got to say that's one of my daughter's favorite games, and the new edition looks so good. ASA Ryan did a great job. I don't know who he's working with for the manufacturing, but the, they're going to come. I don't know if they're painted or just colored plastic, but like your your I don't. What do you call them? Your quads? Your your heroes? I don't even know. What your cubes are going to be fully painted in this new edition, at least as far as I can tell. Like the the proofs he's sharing are awesome looking, and then 3D elements for the board. ISA looks really good. I I sorry. I just all of a sudden uh, someone posted on Twitter, and it's a comparison are of the all the other versions of Spidey's step block from all oh, there the you other go. That's cool. Marvel games. So now, you know, if you've, we've got the one from the new one. Well, someone just posted all four of the other Spidey You know, I could have done that. I actually could have made that post. I could go <laughs> take pictures. I wonder if they have the Saga edition in there, the card-based Marvel RPG. Uh, I, I love Saga Marvel. I don't know. I, I I don't know which these are, so I don't know which is which. On there is game. one version of Marvel I don't own. It was the Marvel Universe role-playing game. That happened to come out when I wasn't in gaming at all. That, that might is, actually be this blue one that I'm seeing here. That's blue with yeah. gold. I'll look at it some other nice. time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, other games I'm excited about. I was excited to get Coyote and Crow. That showed up. So that was cool. That was one of the like anticipating it's going to show up soon type of things. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess there's nothing else that really sticks out. Um, like there's tapestry expansions I'm curious about. Um, that I wouldn't mind trying out, but they're not new hotness at all. Um, I want another Cody Chronicles game to come out. You'll find out why later in the show. Someone suggested Mission Impossible. Yeah, I think that I would be that fantastic. Discussion. Mission Impossible would be an awesome license for Cody Chronicles. Absolutely. And Although, then I want you know to do what else would work. A team. Yeah. A team would make yep. a fantastic Coded Chronicle book. You've got all the different the different four different people. books. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's. There's a bunch of stuff like that, whereas, you know, something like um, something like uh, Knight Rider wouldn't because they don't have the character depth. Uh, oh, you don't necessarily need it. Like like Shining pulled it off with only two characters. Like okay. besides the other problems with Shining, at yeah. least as far as the story was concerned, you only had the mom and the kid, Danny. I don't I, I, I still haven't seen Shining. I have to remember that. I got to watch the Shining. I got to look it up because I managed to find a bunch of these other, like I finally watched Jaws and a few of these other things that I'm like, I played the game. I've never watched the movie. I, I, the Shining, I keep totally forgetting about. Right. I, I think they could do a Knight Rider. Like, I don't think it would be no, probably it wouldn't be I'm as sure good. It wouldn't be, but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, or, or Quantum Leap. Do a Quantum Leap uh, Ode Chronicles. That would be, a, that would be an interesting one. I don't know. Not sure about that. Or Sliders. Remember Sliders? Yeah, Sliders. Uh, yeah, I was prisoner? saying Deanna, I was prisoner? gonna say that one. The prisoner would be awesome. Prisoner is too obscure, though. I think. I, I think sliders might be too obscure now. Yeah, I actually want to need. Now I want to go find sliders again because I haven't. seen that you were a huge fan of sliders. Oh, absolutely, that was fantastic. Me and like, my I dad, liked it, but you were the yeah, big yeah, fan. Me and my dad watched that every single week together. That was that was great. Now, now I'm just like all nostalgia. <laughs> Give me the V game. Come on, let me eat some rice. Oh, I, I I still have a V technical manual somewhere. Nice. Um, <laughs> you ever watch the new series they did? I did. Yeah. So uh, I never got around to watch that. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. It it wasn't bad. Uh, it was. It wasn't fantastic, but I think they did some good casting. They did some interesting stuff with it. Uh, the problem was it. I. They they did so much in the original series that without the story was kind of done. Well, just making a mini series doesn't really cut it. I mean, the mini series was right. just the way they started everything in the original one so mm -hmm. uh it, it was hard to get enough contact in there but it was all right yes uh john uh rice davis what's that what's his first name dan is calling out gimli from sliders oh yeah yeah jonathan reese davis jonathan that's it i'm like rice davis i couldn't remember his first name yes gimli um yeah i want that um <laughs> they, they could go with the whole uh 
make it more interesting. Do do a breakfast club. You, you had the <laughs> breakfast club escape from detention, a Coded Chronicles game. <laughs> like it would totally work. Yeah, four booklets. I, the the solving puzzles would seem a little weird in that one, but hey, why not? Yeah. yeah. Here we end up with our own topic we made up here. What would make for a good Coded Chronicles game? There we go. We need another kids one too. I I don't know what what's another kids license. The, the, like I guess a little My Little Pony would probably work, but yeah, trying to think of. Like Scooby Doo's got the mystery built in. That's what's missing, right? It is Ghostbusters. Yeah. A Ghostbusters one would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. You could do some really cool stuff with the and, and be able to have the puzzles and don't cross the streams. Come on, like that totally is one of those string puzzles. Yeah. Yeah, no, that works. Uh, and then I do. Add, I would like '80s Ghostbusters. Like go to the original, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Hmm. And well, realistically, if they were to do it, they could do do it based and use the cartoon Ghostbusters images. Yes. Um, yeah, that was not the real Ghostbusters. Yeah. not the Ghostbusters cartoon with the flying car with wings and the. Wolf well, that, there, there's all sorts of reasons why all that happened and the whole license because you know. there was because they almost couldn't use Ghostbusters in the first place the because of that old TV show with the with the monkey and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, that was a whole, a whole world of stuff. Um, I just remember as a kid being disappointed half the time I turned it on. Yeah, It was kind of like the, the USB cable. Oh, it's the USB Yes, exactly. <laughs> You'd be it's like, Ghostbuster. Oh, oh. Um, that other one was terrible. John Rice davies the third Welshman mentioned in the episode. <laughs> there you go. See, we're all about the Welsh today. Absolutely. Or technically, because the person who wrote the question in was Welsh. It was also Welsh. Welsh. Yes, so four Welshmen in this episode. We're all uh, about the Welsh here. All about <laughs> that Welsh. No, I don't. don't, don't I'm don't, doing. Just don't. Um, I've already stopped. Um, um, all right. Why don't we move on to this one? Sure. Uh, so D and D Refuge wrote in and asked, "Can Hero Quest make a comeback in a world with Gloomhaven?" So this is a question we have on our question list, but it's obviously not something that's going to take a whole episode to talk about. And what's interesting is when we got this question is when the uh, the 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 um, pulse has robot the crowdfunding was still going on for the new copy of hero quest and while the very simple quick answer is of course no <laughs> because it hasn't i uh, it is definitely not even coming close to competing with the popularity of gloomhaven i don't think it's going to either now, what has really surprised me on my end, no, I did back this on Pulse, so there, that disclosure, no, I didn't get any review copies or anything. I backed this on Pulse with our own money. Technically, it was a gift, so um, back this on Pulse, got it and all the expansion content and all the great stuff. But like, they even threw in some big names here, right? Like, you've got people who designed the adventures, like, uh, oh, what's the actor guy? Joe Magnello, or Magnanello, or however you're supposed Joe to Magnanello. pronounce his name. <laughs> He wrote an adventure for it, right? So you've got the big names. You've got the, the AP people. You've got, you know, everything going for this game. And since the Pulse, there's been zero hype. I, I It's been on sale multiple times. So I through tabletop gaming deals. I'm like, oh, Hero Quest cheap. No one cares. No one's buying it. There's no one talking about it. It, it seems to have made a mark when it was on Pulse. And I don't know if it's a fact that everyone who liked it bought it like everyone who wanted it everyone who had that nostalgia i've wanted hero quest forever bought it on pulse and they got it and they're happier they're not or if it's because of some of the initial reviews which are we talked about it ourselves again i can't remember did we publish a review i don't think we did because we only played once but we talked about it on the show multiple times and there are issues with with the new edition and many of them are just carryovers from the original edition um I, that could be it that like, people were waiting to hear and then they heard and they're like flimsy minis and incomplete rules and and uh contradictory bad line of sight diagrams all the problems the original brought over i it's just weird like like i i i expected more of a buzz now i admit i'd never expected it to be gloomhaven honestly i still don't understand how gloomhaven's as popular as it is it is a super heavy euro game why is it so dang popular? I'm all for it, but it confuses me that it's that popular. And for the mass market and people overall, you figure Hero Quest to be more popular. But I don't think I, I don't think it's going to catch up to Gloomhaven. Um, what really frustrated me, and I didn't even know this, 
they put out expansions, but didn't market the expansions, didn't tell anyone, and they're already sold out. So even for the collector who's like, I will collect all the Hero Quest things, now I'm back to where I was in the 90s, where I have this classic game and they put out expansions only in the EU and I can't get them. So I'm like, yet again, the new Hero Quest manages to follow in the footsteps of the original, because here I am not being able to get everything. So here's an example. Mountain Papa says, after hearing your review, I lost interest. And, and I think that's part of it. And like Deanna mentioned, she said, I think the people who wanted it, the people who had the high nostalgia, got it. Or got it as soon as it came out, like at GameStop and everywhere else. GameStop happened to have a dirt cheap when it came out. And then she thinks uh, removing nostalgia from the equation, there's just not much there to excite people, which honestly, that is a big price point for a game to play with their kids. Absolutely. Right? If you, like, Cause that's basically what it is. It's a kid's game and they didn't fix things. Like the first scenario is still like the hardest in the entire book. Trust me. That's a turnoff. It was a turnoff again in the original. Yeah, no, it's, they made some really strange choices. And I think if this had been a restoration release, yeah. This would have been a world of different. Oh, yeah. We would be having an I entirely agree. different conversation here. Heck, maybe and it would we, be beating. We Gloomhaven. might be comparing this to Gloomhaven. Yep. But because it's Hasbro, who photocopied a bunch of rule books and threw them out there, Basically. you know, they 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 duplicated the art. Like they didn't even. It's not no, even, they it's redid not, all the art, but they they, they copied it. it. Yeah, they copied the art. It's not because it is all new. new art. It's new art that's just redoing the same thing. Yeah. Um. If this had been a restoration game, we would, again, this entire discussion would be night and day different. I agree. But it's not. It's a reprint. And yes, they made a bunch of changes so that they could reprint it to get away, mm -hmm. get away well, from all of the licensing and issues, issues and, and, stuff. and art issues. But realistically, it's just a reprint. And I think the best thing we can say about it is they improved the quality of the uh, set piece minis. <laughs> oh, heck. The, the actual... And I was like, Deanna saying not all the minis are better. I don't know. I think I, overall, the miniatures are way better. I think especially, especially oh, in the, the scenery, the yeah. scenery, the scenery is a huge step up, but it's not hard to make it a huge step up from the cardboard and plastic that was yeah. in the original game. So, I mean, you know, it, they made they made the easy, the easy steps, the easy gains mm -hmm. on the game. And, and and like, I love that there's else? new content. That part is awesome. Like, there are more quest books for this than ever exist. Is anyone going to get that far? Are they going to play through the original and then try the new stuff and actually get to see the Magnum Metal stuff? Like, is that even going to happen for most gamers? I like and from what I've seen for Arata, that might even be unplayable. I haven't tried it myself to say. I mean, I could see if, if you know, if I was down in Windsor, I could see we did a Tuesday night hero quest ap stream right every tuesday night we did a you know two hours oh, every three hours okay. i'm like if you're uh, only here one tuesday we're getting through maybe two three no, no, scenarios like, like every tuesday night we did uh two or three hours yeah. of hero quest ap on twitch that would be good because then you'd get all the people who have the nostalgia but don't want to actually have to deal with it themselves <laughs> and there's probably yeah. a lot of that out there but as a as a general game it's too much money for no improvement Go yeah. out and find a copy in some goodwill of the original game. You're not missing. And, and well, to be honest, yeah, you, good luck if you find well, one yeah. at goodwill. Um, what I also noticed didn't happen is the the price on say eBay or the aftermarket for the original did not drop. Where I thought it would, and you still this new one still one fifth the price you're going to pay for a complete version of the original. Mm -hmm. So I guess if you're going to get into Hero Quest, it's cheaper than buying a, a mint copy for six hundred dollars. But but again, like hundred and what? Have, I don't even remember how much it was. One eighty, something like that. It, it, it's not too crazy. I honestly don't remember how for much. For the amount of stuff you got, you can get it for about one ten. In right. in like right now, the a brand new go buy a box, but it doesn't come with like we got the expansions. Yeah, yeah and you got all the all the. I, I, I did the whatever mythic tier or whatever it was yeah. called. No, absolutely. I mean, I think. You, it was a lot of money uh, for someone who wanted that whole collection. I think that was great. Uh, mm -hmm. It stinks that they have put out the expansion stuff externally, but it was, again, you know, it's it was a lot of money to get it to Canada because we live in Canada, but realistically, so is everything else to get to Canada too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we, we spent about 300 See, I thought it was less than that, but maybe with the shipping, it was around that much. That's a lot of flipping money. But I love HeroQuest. Though, honestly, at this point, we haven't played more than the one sitting. So 
That's a, that's a good sign. I definitely played Gloomhaven more than I played HeroQuest personally, and I loved HeroQuest. Yeah. Kids enjoyed it. It's just part of it, too, is that the game's a chore to set up. So, and actually, I shouldn't say that when I'm comparing to Gloomhaven. Never mind. Just strike that from <laughs> yeah, the record. Because no. because together, comparing those two, Gloomhaven is actually worse to set up. But, but it's one of the reasons we don't play either around here. Yep. No, anymore. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's another one of those games where, you know, you need a table for it. You need the HeroQuest table that you can go to every night to play. Yeah, and leave know, it whatever. set up. And leave it it's just the sorting the cards and stuff. I don't know. I and know what I haven't seen is anyone streaming it. There's a lot more people streaming Gloomhaven than I've ever seen streaming a single game of Hero Quest. I'm and, sure it happens. And it's bizarre because honestly, I think there's I think there is absolutely a way to uh um a way to do that. But who knows? Um all right. All right I think we got time for one more. All right, one last question. So speaking of Gloomhaven. All right. We've got a question from one of our awesome Patreon patrons. Math Guy Dave asks, what are your plans for actual legacy games after Charter Stone? Are you done with Gloomhaven? Okay, so we were talking about that the other day. If we want to get back into doing Gloomhaven and potentially live streaming Gloomhaven. And we were talking about why we haven't. And there's there's multiple reasons. So one of them is right now Tori and Kat are our only gaming group. They're, they're in our bubble. It's the one other couple we've been seeing during the pandemic. Um, they both take ridiculous uh, precautions, especially because Kat is a pharmacist and works in a high-risk setting. They do a rapid test before coming to our house every week, right? Like, so what we haven't done is open up to the other people we used to game with, what I used to call my Monday night group. And we're not going to public play events. So this is my only chance to play games and if I had the option to play Gloomhaven and Gloomhaven alone every week for two to five hours or play f- two to six different games, most often I'm going to want to play two to six different games for multiple reasons. One, I like playing new games and I enjoy playing different games, but also we do this for a living and we have to get through the pile of obligation. You wouldn't be getting to hear about Founders of Tao Teotihuacan or some of the other games that we've been reviewing if we couldn't play them. So that that's a big part of it. Now, what we did talk about is maybe do every other week, right? Like we'll do Gloomhaven every other week. We could do Gloomhaven, which gets us back on Gloomhaven. And then we can still play the other games on the other week. And for a while there, it was looking like we might start getting some of the old group, especially Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton, back over more regularly. But now the numbers are turning to crap again. So that I don't think that's a, a reasonable thing to do at this point. Now, the other thing is we 1,000% thought by this time there would be a studio in our basement and multiple things from chip shortages to ridiculous price to video cards to uh, the unexpected changes in what we plan to do with the house renovations and then price of lumber skyrocketing and the fact there's been a global pandemic for three years has put all of that off and we just thought yeah we'll get back to gloomhaven when we can make it look good and well now if we did it might actually probably be worse because some of the equipment we used to use has broken and I getting things transferred. I've done some permanent things in this room that would be difficult to move down there. Um, we have no good place to put the mic because I don't even have that style of boom arm that we used to use to put it above us. And just, we're kind of not ready to live stream Gloomhaven again, which leads us to the option of, well, Tori and Kat can come over and now and then we can play Gloomhaven. And we have talked about it. The thing is, Gloomhaven did really well. Sorry, Gloomhaven did really well for us as content creators. It's some of our most popular content, and honestly, for the last three years, we've been missing out on that. That that it'd be nice to get that audience back. We had our guy in the chair. He used to join us for Gloomhaven. We had some regulars. That's it. (laughs) Tamujin. Thank you. We were trying to remember that the other day. So so yeah. um, Now we are going to finish Charter Stone first. No matter what, I'm not going to try to play two different legacy games at once. Um, Charterstone, we have four games left and I'm going to admit, I'm going to have a very strong urge to go buy the refresh kit and play again. I'm thinking I may offset that because you can play it on steam and I might be willing to just start a Charterstone campaign, maybe even with some patrons on steam, but then everyone's going to have to buy a copy of the game and everything else. So I think it's in the current Asmodee digital sale. So I know it wouldn't be Asmodee because that's Stonemaier. Yeah, that's Stonemaier. But you can often find it on sale. So I don't know. That's, that's a thought. Um, because I will say, and I'm sure this is, uh, they knew this publishing this game. There's a reason they give you a two-sided map because you're going to get to certain things that happen and be like, oh, if I had known 
that was going to happen, I totally would have played differently. And people are going to want to play a second time so they can play differently. Like, I totally get it. And we're not even done. Now, maybe it'll end just as famously as uh, Pandemic Legacy does for us, and I'll have no interest in ever playing it again. But I don't think we're going to do it with Tori and Cat. Like, I don't think we're going to... Now, let's start Charter Stone over with the same people. Though it is going to be tempting because it'll be the same people and we already know how to play. And I don't think I'd want to throw in someone new who didn't know what the surprises are. Like, I think we need to play with the same group. Um, I am really tempted, going back to games I'm kind of hyped for, really tempted to pick up Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. Because it's deck building, and I love Clank, and I have heard so many good things, despite being so-so on the Penny Arcade Acquisitions Inc. license. Maybe I'll love it. I don't know. I, but it's just, uh, Penny Arcade is Penny Arcade. I like some of their stuff. I don't like others. Uh, a silly take on D&D-ish settings seem, doesn't, I don't know. Clank to me doesn't seem like a, a silly game where you make Penny Arcade style jokes, but I've heard so many good things. It's probably worth it. So I've been really tempted by that. Um, we may go back to Gloomhaven. Um, what we should do is play Jaws of the Lion, maybe restart with four players. Maybe that's what we do just to kind of get back into the groove. Um, I don't know. I, the Gloomhaven might happen. That, that's about all I can say. We, we've been talking about it, but if it does happen, we need to find a way to fill that play other games gap, whether that's suddenly COVID gets, I don't know, whatever shot number five eradicates it and we can finally go to game stores again, or I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take to get there. I honestly have not talked to two of the gamers who used to come over regularly on like, I don't, when's the last time we talked to Tom? Like, I honestly don't know. Uh, so like, I don't even know if they'd be interested in gathering that together again. It's so I don't know. Um, Deanna may have opinions on this one. I'm watching to see if she says anything. <laughs> um, if we do start Gloomhaven again, it's going to be a mess because we're going to be like, I don't know, let's pick this spot on the map that doesn't have a check mark on it and do that adventure because I don't know what's happening. Well, I am so clear. Maybe I'll go back and watch our own actual plays and then I'll, <laughs> I'll know what the heck's going on. There you go. Um, and then when we do it, like, do we change the stream? Because like when Dee and I were doing, like we didn't own these bright lights behind me even then. Like think of that. We didn't even own the improved lighting. We didn't own these. Like, and are we going to set up the the? I don't even know where it is now. The the handy cam to to record all of us, and then is Sean going to in post put those in different spots? Like, I don't even know what we do. And yeah, as Deanna says, I hate moving stuff downstairs to stream. Yep. And like honestly, I think we'd have to buy tech instead. Like, like get another set of lights. We want to buy a set of lights to bring to these mums actually because we're now playing games there fairly regularly, which does fill some of that gap. But the games we play with these mom are not the games we play with Tori and Kat and right. not what we play with our regular group. So I don't know. John needs to move down and then he can set up the Gloomhaven studio and then we'll do it. There we go. <laughs> that's, that's about the best. Um, but yeah, if I was going to pick another legacy game, I think it would be Clank Acquisitions Incorporated. Also really curious about um, Aeon's End Legacy. So if I was going to do that one, and I have been hearing really good stuff about my city. So all of those are on the table, except for the fact I don't own any of them. So, and while D wants to go back to, I think we need to buy another copy of Seafall. Right. I think we need to start over in Seafall, possibly with Torian Cat. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that is going to be it for tonight's AMA. Thank you for all your questions. We didn't have too much from the chat today, but we had some other stuff stocked up and we had some stuff from our Discord. So thank you very much for those questions. Remember, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions and make your game nights better. If you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com.